Welcome music fans. Join us as we step into the captivating life of Gary Thane, the enigmatic bassist whose journey through the world of rock music was as electrifying as his performances on stage. From his success with Uriah Heep to the personal struggles that ultimately led to his tragic end, this video sheds light on the life of a true rock icon. So let's dive in. Gary Mervyn Thane, born May 15, 1948 in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thane, who had two older brothers, Arthur and Conrad, and a younger brother Brian, attended Xavier College, a Catholic school in Christchurch. Described as quiet yet passionate, Thane exhibited an early love for music. At the age of 13, he began performing, showcasing his talent by winning a singing contest at his high school with the rendition of Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Thane embarked on his official music career with The Strangers, alongside his brother Arthur on lead guitar and vocals. At the age of 16, Thane penned his first released song, I'll Never Be Blue, with The Strangers, who released a total of three singles. Following the disbandment of The Strangers, Thane joined The Secrets, contributing to the release of their single, It's You, before the group disbanded. In 1966, Thane and former Secrets bandmate Paul Muggleston teamed up with Peter Dawkins and Dave Chapman of band, The Others, forming, Me and The Others, touring extensively in the UK, including performances at renowned venues like PN Hit House in Germany. After, Me and The Others, Thane and Dawkins formed a new professional group called, The New Nadir, in 1967. The New Nadir found particular success in Switzerland, where they entertained audiences with their jazz-influenced music for about six months. Alongside Thane, the band included Ed Carter on guitar and drummer Mike Kowalski, who replaced the original drummer, Peter Dawkins. In addition to performing their original music, they also served as the backing band for the all-female group The Toys. Despite recording an album for the Witch Season label, it was never released. Following the dissolution of the new Nadir in 1968, Mike and Ed continued to collaborate in various bands, even joining the Beach Boys backing band at one point. Meanwhile, Thane joined the Keith Hartley band, contributing to six of their albums and performing at Woodstock in 1969, unfortunately without available video footage of their performance. Another notable festival in Thane's career was the Bath Blues Festival held on June 28, 1969, though smaller in scale compared to others. The Keith Hartley Band shared the stage with iconic performers like Led Zeppelin and Fleetwood Mac, performing in front of approximately 40,000 attendees. Thane's bass guitar prowess captivated the audience, and he also contributed significantly to the band's repertoire by co-writing several songs, including, You Say You're Together Now, on which he sang lead vocals. In 1971, whilst the band was touring with Uriah Heep, Thane received a call from Ken Hensley, inviting him to join Uriah Heep as their third bass player, replacing Mark Clark. This marked a significant shift for Thane, transitioning from jazz and blues to a different musical genre. However, his distinctive playing style, using only his fingers without a plectrum, remained unchanged. Thane's debut performance with Uriah Heep took place on February 1, 1972, at the Whiskey A Go Go in Los Angeles, California. Thane's tenure with Uriah Heep began with the recording of Demons and Wizards, released in May 1972, a mere four months after he joined the band. Later that same year, he contributed to The Magician's Birthday, co-writing songs like Spider Woman and Sweet Lorraine. The remastered edition of the album, released in 2003, includes additional tracks such as Crystal Ball and Gary's Song, an alternate version of the former, both penned by Thane. However, his final recording contributions with the band came in 1974 on Wonderworld, recorded in Munich, Germany. On September 15, 1974, Thane suffered a serious electric shock on stage during a performance of July Morning at the Moody Coliseum in Dallas, Texas, which severely impacted his health. Already facing challenges due to a demanding touring schedule and a heavy drug dependency, predating his time with Uriah Heep, the incident in Dallas marked a critical turning point. The remainder of the US tour was cancelled, and UK dates were rescheduled. Thane, after openly criticizing manager Jerry Bron for prioritizing financial gains over artistic integrity, was dismissed from the band in late 1974, shortly after their final gig of the year. His last known recording with Uriah Heep was on November 25, 1974, in Brisbane, Australia. Following his departure, the classic lineup disbanded, and although efforts were made to rebuild, the band never quite recaptured the same energy and presence. Thane's time with Uriah Heep saw over 140 live performances worldwide in just three years, marking a significant chapter in the band's history. Thane was widely recognized as an exceptional bassist among his peers, known for his melodic and progressive performing style. Even once jamming with Jimi Hendrix in 1969, 
Unlike many contemporaries, he eschewed conventional bass playing, often diverging from root notes to craft his own jazz, funk, or progressive bass lines, adding depth and complexity to songs. Thane favored instruments like the 1962 Fender Jazz Bass, alongside a Gibson Thunderbird Bass and a modified Fender Precision Bass during his tenure with Uriah Heep. His signature overdriven bass tone was achieved using an acoustic 360 bass amp, contributing to his distinctive sound. Preferring fingerstyle playing over the use of a pick, Thane's innovative approach left a lasting impression on the rock music landscape. Tragically, on the 8th of December 1975, Gary Thane died of respiratory failure, due to a heroin overdose, at his flat in Norwood Green in London. He was only 27 years old. He had been previously married twice, but had not had any children. Following his passing, Thane was cremated at South West Middlesex Crematorium located in Hanworth, within the London borough of Hounslow, Greater London. Subsequently, his ashes were scattered. And there you have it. As we conclude our exploration of Gary Thane's life, we're reminded of the enduring impact he left on the world of rock music. Through triumphs and tribulations, his legacy continues to resonate with fans and fellow musicians alike. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this. Take care and bye for now.